Hello, my nefarious nibblers. It's turn number 65 of my all Warhammer Nations Dominions 5 game. I'm playing a Skaven Blight, and we really are nearing the end of the game now. So let's have a look what we're doing. This turn's going to have to be a bit quick because I'm quite short on time. Um, I didn't do the best job of scripting, etc., and I'm not going to do the best job of recording this turn, but I hope you still enjoy. So we've got a couple of domes up. I'm trying to put domes up, uh, arcane warding, hopefully maybe some frost domes, if I can get my queen of elemental water or my um, sea king into position to do some of those, and uh, some air domes as well, if I can get the air boosters back from my, uh, that are out there at the moment, and get some air domes going up. But yeah, we're doming up our throne provinces, we're having more vermin lords, I'm going to cast another one of those this turn, because they're great, because they can teleport and fight, and be very useful. Just being able to teleport is very um, important for taking the remaining thrones. Teleported around some troops just to get some people in place to do domes, uh, some horde from hell, because they're going to help with our um, keeping the walls up if we get sieged when we've taken the thrones. Some more cloud repeating into position. We're not caring that much that the lizardmen are getting lots of income from this, it's fine at the moment. And uh, we're continuing with our forging as well, which is going to give the Lizardman gems, but it's necessary. We found a magic site. We don't particularly care about this, but a stone circle. Let's have a quick look at it. Woodhenge druins and, and some nature gems. Yeah, the, the kind of gem income stuff doesn't really matter at the moment because we're just going to attempt to win really quick. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do if this doesn't work out because I'm a little bit burned out on the game. I guess I'll continue to play, of course, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Lots of blood slaves. And then a couple of battles. So we've got the uh, Greenskins attacking us in Numeclia. Don't know why I said that in such a spicy way. Numeclia. Just attacking some province defense of ours. This is their only remaining army, basically. And I think they're moving it with Azhag here. Um, they're moving this up to uh, go and uh, retake the throne, or attempt to retake the throne. Um, we had a battle at the Fortress of Susu. This is us storming one of their remaining castles. They've got a big chunk of these sacreds, but no one to bless them by the looks of it, so they're not going to do very well. And then we're just the wall guards and things. And we've got um, a ton of evocation mages, so you, we can just watch the evocation fireworks here. Magma eruptions and things. Skaven haven't got very good eyesight, so they're tending to miss quite a lot with their evocations, but that's okay. You can see we've got our lone vampire attacking in the back. These guys are actually really good. Um, I've been surprised how well they've done against just these mundane troops. I guess it's because they're just a troop and they cost 11 blood slaves and they're, you know, a, a, turns, um, a turn for a mage who otherwise could be doing other things. That's why people don't like them so much, but I think they're kind of fun. Anyway, that was an easy take. We lost nothing. Some fire snakes, doesn't really matter. Unexpected events. Uh, oh dear. The plague continues to kill people. Another warpstone seam. Another warpstone seam. Really going to have to tone those down. I have already halved those in future versions of Skaven, but maybe they need to be even more reduced because they're so strong getting those Warpstone, um, warpstone uh, seam. But on the other hand, I have taken over massive amounts of territory. This is not normal for a game of Dominions to have this much territory um, and be getting all these gems from it. Quetra's attacks in Murius. This is just a scout being discovered by the forces of Itza. That's fine. I hope they still don't really know what I'm up to. And then uh, we've breached the two entrances to these fortifications. So we have got... Oh, Sulfuria people are starving. Yeah, that's fair enough. Have we got anyone we can move to Sulfuria to uh, relieve them? Can you reach it? No. And I'm sending this vampire lord to go and take this province back. Now, I don't know if this is actually worth doing. Um, because next turn I want to be kind of teleporting and moving my people into position to go after thrones. But, um, yeah, I guess I want to kind of prevent the, these goblins from being annoying and causing any trouble for my throne-taking activities. I'm not sure that that's a good move, really, though. Um, it doesn't really put him in position to help with any thrones. I guess he would then be in position to just move into this throne and help defend it if something there happened. I think I'm just going to do it, though. As I said, I don't have a huge amount of time to do things here. So, um, Can anyone reach these boys and bring them... Uh, do we have any... Food items. I know I've got some food items spare somewhere to alleviate this starvation problem. How bad is it? It's not that bad. So, um, over in this fortress, we definitely have some food items. So, if I just grab, I'll just grab one of those to help alleviate the starvation a bit and um, give it to somebody who can get over there. Shuffle puff. I want you in place to be able to teleport, so I don't want you over there. 
Is there anyone else who's in a lab that could get over there and bring an item? Hello, Vile Thrust. Perfect. You are Vile, but you will be carrying the wine over there. So there we go, Vile Thrust can join it. He just will join the siege, but he'll give them the uh, supplies from the endless bag of wine. So we're storming this. I haven't really scripted this up in a terribly intelligent way. I'm basically doing a bunch of um, air elementals from the Queen of Storms. Um, and I'm just doing various evocations and things. I think this is full of just air mages who are going to just be throwing air elementals at me, I guess. So we'll see how I do against that. Um, but I haven't really thought it through. And I really haven't here either. I've just said storm the castle to basically everyone who's there. We've got a staff of storms up. I don't know what they're going to have in their cap. Lots of mages, possibly. Um, I could do with waiting another turn. But I'm kind of feeling impatient at the moment. So I'm just going to, you know, YOLO it. Just yeet my stuff in there and see what happens. Um, I've got some people who are staying back to siege it, and uh, yeah, and building up here. So we don't have anyone casting up a dome here, so maybe we should Norag. Can we get a, um item to Norag to allow them to do some domes? You've got a dome up here. Let's take the hat, go over to... What am I talking about? I don't need to dome this. This is not important to dome. No, in fact... I do not need that at all. Perhaps what I should be doing was what I was already doing, which is moving this guy a bit closer to the action down there. Um, alternatively, I could send him back. I think this is fine, though. I think I had him cloud trapezing down here to help out with something, but I'm, I'm not sure why I was bothering to do that. I'll just move him. Forging a few items and things, still producing stuff in our um, conjuration site. Um, you know, getting another Vermin Lord here. I'm sending a lesser horror down at this throne, which I'm watching. And uh, I've also have had a look at this throne. So basically for these two, I need something that can fight loads of shadows, which is basically um, fire shields and having magic resistance. So I can kit out a Vermin Lord, possibly Truffle Puff will be teleporting over there, or um, Get Barge, Bow to for one of our one of our Vermin Lords will be teleporting over there to deal with that. Here, I really want to attack it with something that's already... I'm, I'm forging some items to make people um, shock immune, because this is just full of watchers. Watchers and then just garbage. So if we win here, we can send um, Ayala over here to deal with this. I think Ayala could cloud trapeze. How far would it be? One, two, three, four. Hmm. Yep, they can cloud trapeze over there. So we just want to be... Basically, I'm going to hit as many thrones as I can. So I'm going to go after this throne. I'm going to go after this throne with teleporting things, both of those. I'm also going to make sure that I've got um, Vermin Lords teleporting into those because the Vermin Lords will be able to immediately claim the thrones. Of course, I'm going to go after this throne. Lots of my forces here are hiding at the moment, but they're all going to just move on to that. I'm forging loads more um, bags of endless wine to try and avoid the supply issues from that, but they're just going to chuck everything onto this throne. Um, I'm reinforcing this. I'm putting a dome up here as well. And... Uh, yeah, just going after these, this throne, three additional thrones basically, and I'm going to claim all of these thrones, of course, that I've already picked up and haven't claimed yet, so this one's going to be claimed. But I don't want to do that until I'm in a position, because it's going to trigger people to go, oh wait, he's trying to win using all the thrones. Um, so yeah, I'm going to wait for that. We'll just see if it works out. It would be nice if I could kind of conclude the game um, with a win there. I'm in a really, really strong position, and I'm kind of a bit burned out on it. I've just been busy with other things, so don't particularly want a protracted battle to try and win. So we'll see what happens next turn. We should still have some fun battles here and here, taking these thrones, and uh, we'll see what the next turn brings us. Thanks for watching. Hello there. It's turn 66. Let's have a look. So we've got research and evocation completed. That's up to level 8. Level 9 is where we get the really exciting stuff. We do have Pillar of Fire because of that, so we can hurl out some very nasty evocation there if we don't have fire resistance. We cast a Horde from Hell, we put up another dome on one of our thrones, uh, we've got another Vermin Lord because we need a lot of teleporting um, super combatants and spellcasters, those are nice, and we're just accepting the fact that we're giving lots of stuff to the lizards, they're getting lots of death gems from us doing this. We cast some Bone Fiends, I think that's to help siege something, and we sent a Lesser Horror over to Lost Canyon, which is um, produced a couple of Horror Mantises. And they have gone to this, have a look at these throne defenders. So this throne, I think, could be taken by something, because it's full of these shadows, something that has high uh, magic resistance, um, something that doesn't rely on invulnerability and ethereality, but has lots of protection. Magic resistance is to help against the uh, paralyze attacks from the shadows and the steel strength from the 
uh, from these lads. These all have very low length weapons and are very vulnerable to fire shields. Uh, fire shields are also good against these wolf drive. So yeah, fire shields is what to go with there. And then have to bear in mind that there is an extremely nasty uh, Adonoki of the Underworld present. It's got a Mist Scimitar, a Hardwood Club, Boots of Quickness, and tons and tons of gems. Now the horrors we sent in actually do kind of okay because they've got magic attacks and they're pretty nasty. So they're going to kill a few of these um, Shade Beast and things. But it was just to test their defenses really. You can see they just get swarmed by all these shadows and the like. Now they have very good magic resistance being horrors. So they're doing just fine against these. Uh, this one's still here. Are they paralyzed? don't think they're paralyzed yet. I'm gonna do some more killing. Come on guys, wake up. It's looking suspiciously like they are paralyzed or not able to move. Yeah, they are paralyzed. So despite the very high magic resistance, they ended up getting paralyzed. So something to bear in mind for anything we send in, it's going to have to rely on its fire shield to roast these guys. But you can see that the um, uh, Ananuki here is just casting some skeletons. It doesn't really matter. Again, they'll just get killed by fire shields. So fire shields, casting fire elementals, anything like that would be useful here. And they managed to kill a few things, uh, which is nice. Any, any number of kills just to soften this up is good. Um... We captured some blood slaves, and then we got a battle between Slanesh and the Lizardmen that we get to see, which is a block of Slanesh Chaos Warriors taking out some province defense, so very straightforward. And then a battle in Sulfuria. Now that is the Greenskins attacking me, and this is on the throne, so this is quite a big fight for us. Uh, let's have a look at these armies that are stacked up. So, the, there's a lightning bolt right at the start there. The uh, enemy that we're lined up against is tons of air mages. There's a few other mages, there's a bunch of kind of chaffy troops uh, that aren't a very serious threat, some other mages, and there is of course Ashag the Slaughterer who is very nasty. So, let's see what we've got arrayed against them. Well, it's not an incredibly strong force. Uh, we've got our Queen of Storms there, she's got Ring of Returning so she's safe. We've got uh, one of our Vermin Lords, we've got a Grey Seer or two, we've got some Spectral Mages. We've got our um, Banefire King, who is of course there with his Spirit Helm, that's where that Lightning Bolt just came from. Some Mechanical Men, some kind of Chaff stuff, and loads of Imps. And then a huge number of our Sacreds, a really long line of our Sacreds here. And a few more back there. Now I know uh, that they are going to cast tons of air elementals and I suspect I have not because I didn't really properly script this uh, I haven't really got the right counter to the loads of air elementals at all they can do fantastic big air elementals can trample this stuff they can trample up this um, SC they can of course lightning blast our poor king of banefires he does not have uh, any lightning protection at all which is very foolish to go against air mages with no lightning protection but um, I just didn't really do much scripting last turn so we can see their stuff going off. Yep, they're all casting full-size air elementals. And so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think it's 15 full-size air elementals, which is extremely nasty, obviously. We've cast Storm, which against Azhag is fantastic. Stops Azhag from flying. Very good. It doesn't stop our imps, because we'd already sent them in to attack or attack rear attack all over the place. So they may get some of these air mages. The big problem for us is that it doesn't stop at all the air elementals. In fact, it just makes the air elementals a lot better having storm up so really an own goal casting storm there and there the air elementals go there's already some trashing our sacreds uh, these imps don't get to take off because of the storm and yeah you can just see it's a bit of a mess with the air elementals trampling all over our guys and causing trouble in general let's see what happens to our uh, king of banefires i suspect he is just going to get roasted up by um so he's casting Bane Fires, which is doing a bit of damage, but he's exhausting himself by doing it. The idea there was that he would kill Azhag maybe, but of course Azhag's stuck back over there, he's kind of not going to get hit with it. Some more evocations coming down and roasting these troops. Our Sacreds are getting stuck in and fairly easily beating up their troops. The problem is all these air elementals. And here comes a second wave of them. The full size ones again, so they fatigue themselves out and then they've cast this massive extra wave of uh, air elementals. I think they've cast two or three each. Our super combatants are in here. Falafel the Charmer is next to Anthrax. But you can see that the air elementals have just hoovered up so many of our sacreds at this point. 
it's just a bit of a disaster. And I think we might be routed. At least the Soul Vortex is um, grabbing a bit of fatigue back by chomping on our own sacreds there. In goes Falafel the Charmer. Unfortunately he walks past Azhag. It'd be nice if Falafel the Charmer had gone in and uh, been in a position to blast him there. A flame eruption hits a few of these guys. We've got a um, Devil Thug fighting in there as well. They're very tired out. Some of them did get killed. We've got a um, one of our Wraith Lord Thugs there. Those are fine because if they die it doesn't matter, they're immortal. But yeah, we've now routed here. So Azhag's actually taken a few hits, but he hasn't taken any wounds. Uh, Flaff of the Charmer's running away. King of Banefire's running away now. We've still got some very minor stuff on the field. Some of our Spectral Mages still fighting over here. He is going to run smack into these air elementals. Oh no, he's going around them. But yeah, this has already gone quite wrong. Can Anthrax safely get off the field? Let's speed things up. Flap of the Charmer leaves. Anthrax leaves. Queen of Storms is over there. As soon as she gets hit, she'll use her ring of returning to leave. So basically, we just got routed because our troops all died. Um, it was relatively close, funnily enough. So she has got tons of uh, shock resistance, 28. So they're not actually going to be able to hurt her with all their little shocks, but she just eventually leaves. And we see one of them got decayed. So, not good for us. Um, losses for them, a great shaman, an orc boss, two priests, five of their wind masters. So that was um, down from 14 to 9, so a significant reduction in their firepower there. Obviously killed all of their uh, kind of not particularly impressive troops, apart from one or two survived. Um, and because that was a break siege, they've kicked out all of our people, so we're no longer sieging them. We lost three devils, we lost two uh, grey seers. That's not particularly great, but I mean, at this point in the game, I'm not that bothered about losing those kind of mages. The King of Banefires died. Um, I don't really understand how he died. He should have retreated, and then I should be seeing in the retreat details what happened to him, but that is not the case. And it makes me wonder if there was a replay bug on this battle, because some of these things don't quite add up to me. I did see the Wraith Lord die. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just saying he died in the retreat, but it's it's not really being clear about that. I know that my Queen of Storms got sent home through the Ring of Returning, even though she just retreated and didn't get hit. Uh, so I don't quite understand that. Yeah, and then we lost uh, 72 Council Guard, which is, you know, 10 turns worth of capital only recruitment, which isn't great, except at this point in the game, oh well, you know, we'll put up with things like that. Lost tons of imps, but that's fine, they're just imps. Mechanical men, that's not great, of course. Yeah, so pretty pretty bad losses for us. Um, but of course, a Pyrrhic victory for the Greenskins, they're in no position really to do much against us. Then we also had a battle at their capital. Uh, here we had a stronger force overall, I would say, and they had significantly less to stop us. They do still have a big mage core over here, and they'll be casting, um, I think, yeah, they're not not got great firepower there. So we're basically just hurling huge numbers of evocations and um, flaming slings and things on them. We've got some water elementals and doom wheels at the front as well, and some earth elementals. Mechanical men rolling in the middle. Already cleared the walls. Um, and our dudes are storming in. They've cast uh, an Earth Elemental there. They've got some kind of body ethereals and stuff. We've just got a huge amount of evocation. You can see all the uh, mechanical men at the front and just tons of evocation coming over the top, falling fires, things like that. Um, so we should be able to roast our way through their remaining infantry fairly easily. And then we've just got a core of mages to deal with. Some of them have already run. Some rat ogres and uh, water elementals moving in there to reinforce. But yeah, it's looking good. We've uh, got a big log jam here of casting all these fire elementals, and they're just sitting around setting fire to my troops. So that wasn't very smart. <laughs> Not very well scripted, I would say. But um, it doesn't matter because we've got such overwhelming force here. We're just crushing through the infantry, and we're going to kill all these mages. So let's speed this up. This is another one where there's a natural storm stopping any flyers. Uh, which is actually bad for us, the imps would have probably been useful to have them flying around, but... 
in we go. Oh, look at those mages just getting cut down. That's always lovely to see. They're actually fighting quite well with their little flame eruptions, burning hands, things like that. But yeah, we cut our way through, and that is that. So, what was the uh, rate casualties? Well, we didn't lose any commanders. That's what we really care about. Bunch of giant rats and foul spawns. Nothing consequential lost here. Two vampires are going to reappear in my capital, I believe. And then we killed 14 goblin shamans, and Nightman great shaman, two goblin great shamans, eight orc shaman. These are the guys that did the, the uh, fire spells that caused me the trouble. Killed a windmaster, which is good, and uh, take up their capital. So that's really put an end to any sense that they're going to cause us further problems, apart from at that throne. On to the unexpected events. We've got a warpstone team. We lose a warpstone team. We reopen a warpstone team using a laboratory. Um, we have a festival there. A group of knights have attacked in the city and waste, and I'll obviously deal with that. That's a throne province. And with Peter Cliffs, we lose some money. Worldwide event, must misfortune and death. That's fine. This is the knights just taking out the province defense. I'm going to just send a whole bunch of mages to Evo Blast these knights to pieces because um, I like to watch that. It's fun to watch, and it's only a very small force. I'm really going to go overkill on it, but it's just amusing to watch in Obsidian Waste. So, And Adenhel the Wraith Lord is back. So, what am I doing this turn? Well, I'm getting things in position to still go after thrones. Uh, there's one more throne in addition to the ones I previously talked about that I'll probably go after, which is the Forest of the Lost, because it's in range and because it will be distracting to the Lizardmen if I go after it. So I think next turn I'm going to be attacking the Lizardmen. Uh, widespread spy actions and assassinations and things, and then we're just going to go straight for the Forest of the Lost. But for now I'm moving my forces into position to have a go at taking Sulfuria again, and I'm doing a magic phase attack on them. So I'm sending in uh, Kiwi Chu, who is teleporting in. He'll be casting Body Ethereal, Personal Luck, Blessing, and then doing Soul Slays. He has been given something to put up to size 5, so if they're casting loads of air elementals, which is what I expect, I'm hoping that him being size 5, having regeneration and having very high defense skill will keep him from uh, dying to all the trample. Um, yep, so uh, that's the hope with him, and he'll be able to hold his own there. Maybe that won't work, maybe I'm underestimating how much size 6 works against size 5 when you're trampling. But I'm, he's got a full shock resistance too, I should point out, so if they get downsized they can't actually shock him. Is that true? Have I definitely given him shock resistance? Shock resistance 25, yeah, because I put a copper plate on him. Uh, he can also fight Azhag, although maybe not successfully, and there's also Nephile. So I've, I've armoured and armed her up so that she can take on Azhag, is the plan. Um, she'll go in and just cast some big air elementals to hold their elementals in place and to maybe kill Azhag if they get a chance, shock him. So uh, yeah, that's the plan. Those two are just teleporting in. And we are going to uh, move the rest of our forces into position. I think I'll move... Am I moving somebody in here? Yeah, I'm moving just a handful of stuff I don't particularly care about in there, plus Falafel the Charmer. Um, and yeah, they'll. so they're moving in as regular movement. So if we do win the battle, they'll just be moving in to help Siege. But if we don't win the battle, they'll be moving in to have another crack at winning when hopefully the gems are a bit depleted and so on. So we'll see about that. Moving Truffle Puff down here to put this under siege. I'm not going to try and take it, probably, but I'm just going to put Palami under siege um, and get him into position for maybe causing some trouble over in this region. Uh, still got lots of my forces in position around this throne, and I've kind of revealed them, and I think that the uh, Slanesh has kind of prepared a bit here. They've got a load of released ones. Uh, they basically just dug up the guys that are in this cave Um Lots of strong undead and the like in there. I can probably send a force that's quite capable of dealing with those. That shouldn't be too difficult. I'm moving Thalassa down there, so I have lots of water magic. I've got lots of other magic available. I'm casting Mix of Thousand Poxes. Um, I'm not going to leave those around in case they attack me, because it'll just poison all my mages. That'd be bad. But I will be casting those to get my Dominion pushed and to just do the kind of Foul Vapors tricks that I'm Slash if I need to. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on down there. Over here, I'm casting another Vermin Lord. I don't care about giving mages at the moment to uh, giving uh, magic gems to Lizardmen. What I care about is just having more forces available because it's right at the end. At least I hope this game is right near the end. Uh, Baltufa is, you know, getting ready to do some teleporting and the like. Um, Serbia is my new one. I'm going to rename him after after one of my rabbits, I think. Uh, so he will be called. 
Cinnamon Thunder Mouse. Um, so he's going to go over there. Doing a little bit more forging, but not a huge amount. I'm recasting the King of Banefires because uh, it annoyed me that I lost the King of Banefires, so I'm just going to cast him again. Um, there's no real strategic reason for that. I just got annoyed that I lost him. I've got Ayala back here, who is moving just down there to maybe summon another Queen of Elemental Air, particularly if that one that I have over there on the other side, if that goes wrong and she dies. Um, yeah, I'll want to resummon her. And I should probably make some more kit for some of my guys. Have we got any more Dwarven Hammers? Yeah, we've got two Hammers spare. Um, let's have a look. What can we forge? We've got quite a lot of good shields. Maybe I want... Shadow, oh, I'm just doing a shadow brand. Shadow brands are generally fun and useful. And uh, yeah, let's move another grey seer down here, perhaps. Let's get them moving. Actually, do I have any boots for you? Flying boots, there you go. You can just fly down there. It's just good to have lots of my grey seers in position down there, I think. Sharp eyes, are you also capable of flying around? No, we don't have any more flying boots available, apparently. My god is actually moving back. I had moved her across, but I'm moving her back here in case this continues to go wrong and be annoying. I can send her over to maybe deal with Azhag, uh, fly over there and do some damage. Uh, yeah, so continuing with my plan to have things in place to go after multiple thrones at once, including this one. So this one's going to be high magic resistance and fire shield and fire effects generally. This one is going to be um, anti... Uh, anti... Um, shock you know lots of shock resistance uh, i may just test it i may just have a little look at it can i do a send horror over there do, 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 do. send lesser horror can you reach that yes so we'll send a lesser horror over to investigate exactly what's in that uh, province and we've got a scout there who sailed over there with his little boat in his pocket I think that's pretty much it. On research, we're going for Alteration Level 7, which gives us Fog Warriors, which is, of course, very strong. It also gives us uh, Phoenix Pyre, which, again, very strong. So a few different things there. Marble Warriors we can cast. Yeah, lots of good stuff in there. And we're going for Evocation Level 9, because it's really fun to cast uh, Flames from the Sky on people. And I've got a bunch of high fire casters, so that's just a fun thing for me to do. Um, I could go for... A maelstrom, probably. Global enchantments wise, all the slots are full, but uh, one, two, three, four, five of them are not me. I've only got two, well, of misery and internal pyre, so I could throw up a maelstrom and just see if it sticks, but of course, it would give tons of gems to the lizards, and as, as much as I, you know, profess to not particularly care about that, it is a bit, it's a bit much giving them huge amounts of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it costs 80. I suppose we could try it. I don't know. I don't want to give them that many gems because they'll just cast Maelstrom themselves, probably. Let's just leave it for now. I'm still kind of in the um, situation that I'm not... Um, I'm not hugely uh, putting lots of time into the turns at the moment. I'm just kind of playing, you know relatively minimal amount of scripting and the like because um yeah i just i'm I'm not finding it hugely fun i don't i don't i'm really enjoying the game and uh, the game is context but i kind of want to bring it to a close now um i've got too much territory and too much stuff going on and uh, i'd rather kind of either finish the game or someone would, like give me a big setback because i've just been kind of rolling through the orcs and it's a uh, uh, it's, it's it's not the most fun to have loads of stuff to do in late game. So I'm just putting in less effort into the scripting and things um, because Dominions is about having fun and I find it more fun to put a little bit less effort in and just to kind of see what happens. Okay, everyone. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye now.